So, wow, lots of audience. Um, good, so uh, one first thing, because I didn't find any, um, any slide for it. Thanks to all the Drupal Camp uh, Baltics organizers. You guys rock. Um, so, um, my name is uh, João Ventura, I work for Wunder Germany, and I'm going to speak about Git and Composer workflows for Drupal 7 and 8, um, mostly for Drupal 7, because we all know the, one, the ones for Drupal 8, but basically the same thing applies to both. Um, I want to thank also the sponsors. Uh, all these companies, Adapt, ADM, Interactive, XOV, Zone, Wunder, Trinidad, DMB, sorry, uh, <laughs> VB Mandus, and uh, web partners. Uh, if you guys work for any of those, the fact that you make a profit allows us to be here, so thanks a lot as well. Um, so in summary, I'll be speaking about some Drupal build systems, uh, Drush Make and Composer, and, um, and Git. So the first one is about, I'll start with the Drupal build systems. Uh, so we all, who, of, who, who here knows Drush Make? Hands up, come on, only you? Wow, okay, good. So, uh, first of all, I have to say sorry that you actually had to work with this shit. <laughs> the good news is it's basically dead. Uh, it's only, Drush Make is only in Drupal, in Drush 5 to 8. It even has two flavors of uh, the ini file. It builds your site with the exact versions so you, you cannot uh, do semantic versioning. Um, and it builds, well, core and uh, projects, modules, themes, your libraries. It allows in-time patching. It supports stuff like subversion and bazaar. Anybody worked with bazaar? <laughs> yeah, so there is one nice thing. So you, if you have an existing Drupal 7 site, and you don't have a make file for it. You can run uh, drush make generate project dot make. It will figure out your what your site is running, and it will spit out a uh, a drush make file. And it's pretty good. So if you for some reason are running a Drupal seven site that doesn't have a make file, run that now. Uh, and f uh, among other things, because something else I will be speaking about later needs you to have a, an existing make file. Um, my slide, okay. So this is one of the make files. It's pretty easy to read. I, I've simplified it a lot. So this is a make file for a site, a pretty simple site that only runs uh, views. It only runs token. It's got the latest version of Drupal and it's using the Zen uh, base theme. So this is a theme, very easy to also say, so I want everything in contrib. This is the version that you can do. This is the token version, 1.7. This is views version. And then you want to apply a patch to your, um, to your views version. And uh, so you, you can say, it doesn't really matter what's it's here. Uh, usually you can actually put something bigger to explain what the patch is doing, but for uh, demonstration purposes. And this is actually, if you're, if you're running Drupal, if you're running PHP 7.2, you'd actually need this patch nowadays, because this is the patch that makes uh, views Drupal 7.2, uh, PHP 7.2 compliant. So this is the ini format. Ah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> giving up on my... And this is the YAML format of the same one. So it's a bit more verbose, a lot easier to read. The other one, uh, you kind of need to be almost a programmer to understand what's the thing with all the square brackets. Uh, this is way simpler. It's a bit more, uh, well, a lot more lines, 
but the, the content is exactly the same. Um, here, the, the patch, as you can see, more or less the same thing. Um, yeah, so that's make and how it works. Um, I mean, how it looks like. Composer, which everybody here knows Composer already? Come on, hands up. Yay, well then. Or else you'd get a, I, I would have to jump up a few slides to explain to people what Composer is. So Composer is the dependency manager for PHP. We all know that we, it works well with uh, semantic versioning. And you've got these packages repository. So when you run Composer, by default, it grabs things from packages.org. Um, we, in Drupal, in the Drupal world, we, even though we got off our island, we still like to do things special. So we, we've got our own packagist, uh, and we've got a packagist for Drupal 8, and we've got another packagist for Drupal 7. I, I, hate, I find this really stupid, because basically the major version, we all talk about um, semantic versioning, but the, the, the major version is actually in the URL for your packagist. So if you want to specify, if you specify that you're running packages 8, and you say, hey, but I want to run Drupal 7, it will not find it, because it, you actually need to change your source, but yeah, things. Um, so semantic version is pretty simple. You've got x.y.z, x being major, y being uh, the minor, and z being the patch version. And there's this idea that uh, on each major version, you do a lot of uh, backwards of BC breakage. So things that work with Drupal 7 not necessarily work with Drupal 8. Things that work with Drupal 9 might not well, things that work with Drupal 8 might not necessarily work with Drupal 9. And that, this is actually going to happen. So when we move to Drupal 9, supposedly everything will just work as long as you prepared your modules. Uh, and by prepared means if you're using PHP Storm and your PHP Storm is telling you, hey, this function has been deprecated, and you just say, yeah, I don't care, it's just there. Well, that function will disappear when Drupal 9 comes along. So if you don't take care of it, you, whatever you're doing will just stop working. Um, yeah, so the rest is, is pretty easy. And we don't actually use this other than in Drupal Core. Uh, Core is the only project that at the moment is using XYZ. Uh, Contrib is only using uh, two versions. Well, there's there's a a need in major versions because basically modules work for Drupal 7 or 8. I don't know any module that actually is able to work with both versions of Drupal at the same time. It would be an interesting uh, experiment to try it <laughs> to see if it's possible. Uh, ah, sorry. So, um, yeah, so versions. How do you specify versions in Composer? There's all this stuff. The one thing I want to pinpoint very uh, specifically is the meaning of the tilde and the caret when you're, um, when you're working with the, the three versions. So if you're working with um, just two versions, like every Composer uh, package for uh, Drupal when you're using modules, you're only saying 1.0. Um, so base, this is basically the same. Tilde, caret, it all says between 1.2 and less than 2.00. If you're working with uh, the three, the major, minor, and patch, then it's clearly different. I mean, when you specify tilde, then it only goes up to 1.30, which is kind of uh, maybe what you want to have when you're working with Drupal Core. You don't want to jump from uh, 8.6 to 8.7 without uh, without testing it first. Uh, but in any case, I would usually recommend that you use uh, the the carrot. This used to work better. Um, so Florian even already mentioned it on his uh, previous talk. There is this uh, Composer template for Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. I, everybody knows it, no? The Composer project for Drupal. Um, it does 
provide already the packages. Um, it already specifies also where to install stuff where Drupal expects it. You can have patches because Composer is uh, based on the, 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 the idea that you do pull requests instead of patches, but um, I think it's something that we will see how it works in now that we, when we move to GitLab. But still, uh, I, I still have the idea that we'll be using patches for a long time, among other things, because it's, it's simply not feasible uh, on the scale that we are working, that there's pull requests coming from everywhere. Um, nobody's going to maintain uh, like some popular module like paragraphs. Uh, nobody's going to be able to understand uh, not being the maintainer of paragraphs. Okay, there's this pull request that adds uh, compatibility with some other module, and then there's this pull request. And unless you are going to be managing your own branch that where you push those pull requests into, you're still going to work with patches because you want both of them. And there's not going to be a, a pull request that does both of them unless you do it. So patches are good. It installs Drush and it does some scaffold, so it grabs some files from from Drupal core. And now there's also the the Drupal project for Drupal 7 uh, that has a few more extra stuff. So I'm the maintainer of this uh, of this branch of Drupal project. What it does what does it give you? So it gives you the requirements for Drupal 7 PHP. Um, Unfortunately, this you need to specify this in your composer JSON at project level, because Drupal 7 doesn't have a composer JSON itself. So, if you go to Drupal 8 composer.json, you'll see it specifies there the minimum version of PHP that it has. It specifies there what are the PHP um, modules, stuff like PHP GD and uh, I don't know. Uh, PDO and other other things that Drupal requires from PHP, the extensions of PHP that are needed for Drupal to even work, um, are in the Composer for Drupal 8 and not in the Composer for Drupal 7 because there's no Composer for Drupal 7 from uh, Drupal.org. So we need to do have that in our own project. Uh, it also does the um, Composer patches with a specific patch that you need. So when you're running the C. Wiggins uh, Composer patches, uh, it does not work well with this other part, which is the preserved paths. And the preserved paths is a bit the problem when you're working with Composer and Drupal 7. You have an issue. Um, you can do one thing in Drupal 8 when you're fed up for some reason, you don't trust your version of Drupal anymore. One thing that you can do to force it to reinstall the whole of Drupal is you go in and you do RMRF uh, core, deletes all the core. There's nothing in there inside core that's important. So you, you didn't lose anything. And then you do Composer install, and it grabs a new version of Drupal. You got a fresh Drupal installation. You're fine. Try to do that with Drupal 7. There's no core. So what you can do is like RMRF your directory, and there goes sites all. So all your custom code is gone. All your files are gone. Um, yeah, so you need the Composer Preserve Paths to basically say, install Drupal Core, Drupal 7 Core, but preserve what is in sites all custom, what's in site, well, sites all modules custom, sites all Teams custom uh, sites all uh, sites default files and stuff like that that you need to be there uh, and, uh, and the rest is not that important. Um, so how do you create a project with Drupal Seven? It's exactly the same as you already know for Drupal Eight. So the only thing you change is that you need the, the version there to be slightly different, because you're grabbing the 7.x branch of Drupal project and not the 8.x branch of Drupal project. The one thing that I would say very important, and it, this is one thing that uh, even at Drupal 8 level, uh, a lot of people don't get, is you should be configuring this line in your uh, project. Why? Because. Um, 
when you run Composer in uh, updates on your own machine, if you're for some reason not running the exact same version of uh, PHP that is going to run in the in the production environment, you might actually introduce dependencies that when you roll them out on your production environment are not going to be possible. Um, so one very simple thing is maybe for some reason your production environment is, God forbid, in, in PHP 5.6. Most likely nowadays it would be on PHP 7.1 or 7.0, but you like to be on the cutting edge and your own development environment is on PHP 7.2. You run with, in your own environment Composer Update. Uh, it installs a lot of packages that said, oh, I'm f we're running PHP 7.2, so I'm pretty fine just running this. It changed the composer lock, you push it to the, to the environment, it goes to production, and then in production it's like, oh, no, I cannot run any of this because I don't have PHP 7.2. So, yeah, do that and specify your own version of PHP. And uh, look into what uh, Florian was just talking about, where you're, you have this Lando and, you, that, and that configures basically the same versions for your Drupal development environments and for your, your production environments. Um, da, da. So one of the things, so now about workflow. Um, so the first time that you run, or, you, or when you do a major update, um, you run Composer updates. During deployment, you should never run uh, Composer update. You should just run Composer install. And when you want to add a new module, uh, don't run Composer, uh, don't, don't, don't manually edit the composer.json and then run Composer update. Run uh, this line, Composer require, Drupal, the version of whatever you want, specify the, the version with a caret, uh, which would be my advice, and then update with dependencies because you need whatever that, um, that module that you just installed needs, you also need to, to update its dependencies. So this would be the line that you, I would suggest people use to add a new module. Um, so you basically you would uh, oscillate between doing Composer install when, whenever one of your colleagues does this, and you, when you need a new project, you do that. Um, and you only run that, I'll speak about that later. And finally, once you've done that, you commit both composer.json and composer.lock. Um, I've seen a lot of people that are like, why not run composer on, um, on your live productions? Well, mostly because composer is not a build tool. You should have better build tools. Um, so yeah. So. Remember those YAML uh, and uh, any format files for from Make. This is a bit how it looks like if you're doing if you've used Composer. Um, so same site. So you're running uh, Drupal 7.60, uh, and you've got Token 1.7. You got Views. You got Zen. You got Rush as well. Um, but you need to specify the source of your packages in Drupal 7. Uh, and you also need a lot of stuff. So you need the C Wiggins Composer patches so that you can use patches with Composer. And you need these preserve paths so that it doesn't wipe out whatever is in sites uh, whenever, when you install core. And there's a lot more lines at the bottom which didn't fit here, including the, the patches area. I'll try to show it in in a few minutes. Um, so how do you, you have your make file. You don't have composer yet. So one of the things that is now in Drush is this command. Uh, well, make convert has always been there. It just before wasn't able to, to do, to export as composer. And now it is. So if you have a make file, and if you don't have a make file, remember one of the first slides, um, this can convert your existing make file. So you specify there whatever make file you already have. 
and it outputs a composer.json. That composer.json would allow you to start building your sites with, um, with composer. One thing it, I have to say, I mean, and I actually I was doing a lot also this patch that allows this to format composer to be an output. I didn't care about libraries. Libraries are just too hard. Um, so it does not convert libraries. So the libraries that you have in Drush Make, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to put them in your composer. It's very likely if you are using a package that that package actually already exists as a composer packages site system. Um, if not, then you, one thing that you can do is exactly the same that you were doing in Drush Make. So in Drush Make, whenever you add libraries, you usually specified something like a zip file. And you said, OK, this is this zip file, and it's going into sites all libraries name. Uh, so you can still do the same thing. It's uh, fairly easy. And in the readme of the, uh, of the Drupal project, there's uh, some explanation on how you can do your own package that uses a zip file. Some other things that I would recommend. So this leaves you with a composer JSON that works. It doesn't leave you with a composer JSON that's compatible with Drupal Project 7. So if you want to use uh, the Drupal Project 7.x, uh, you can add some the scaffolding, and you can add, add the, the requires that, uh, that Drupal Composer, the, the, the Drupal Project uh, adds. Um, and you will also need to add the patch to Composer patches that uh, that is required. Um, because that one doesn't, doesn't do it by itself. Um, and one final thing before I do a short demo is um, remember the, the git ignore. So when you build Drupal 7, it's going to have a lot of crap. Um, that you should maybe not uh, configure in there. So you'll need, you'll need to say, OK, so first of all, one, one caveat, like Composer project for Drupal 8, it will install your Drupal. It expects that your Drupal 7 site is in web. So what you want is to basically ignore everything that is uh, in web. So the index.php, the I don't know, the changelog, the robots.txt, all those files that are there in the root uh, that you know from Drupal 7, you don't want them to be committed. Um, and, but you need some of the stuff that's under uh, web. So there's the second rule, and then you also want to ignore whatever is in includes. Um, so there's, there's a lot of little things. Uh, I would suggest you just use this dot git ignore that is part of, uh, of, the, um, of the Drupal 7 uh, Composer project. Because it, if you use all of these, you'll see um, it, you shouldn't have anything other than what is actually in your project uh, committed to core. Um, yeah, so let's see if Murphy's Law doesn't uh, affect me. So one thing I want to show. Um, can you see well? So there's this. This is the make file that I just showed in any format. Um, this is the same file in uh, YAML. And the way you usually run something, um, like for instance, let's remove YAML. So if I want to run Rush Make uh, DCB18, make YAML into DCB18 YAML. So this is what you know about how to build a, a Drupal 7 site with Rush Make. It just runs, it generates a patches.txt file, um, downloaded everything. Pretty nice, no? Now, now you have it here in, um, 
in DCB YAML, you've got all your files. There they are, what some of the, the ones we talked about, index.php and robots. Uh, so it's all there. Um, if you want to, to run, uh, so I've got a site that's here, and this was built by another version of Make, and if I want to run the, the, the Make convert that I had before, um, I can just convert it like this, so it doesn't say much of anything. But if we look at the composer.json.new that I just created, you'll see, wow, this is a lot bigger than the make files I just showed you. Know? So you've got, it converted the one of the files that I, I showed you, so you've got Drupal there, you've used and token, then there's like conflicts, uh, some other stuff like prefer stable, these sort packages, which is, I've, if you don't use this config, well, read about it, it's pretty good. Then it, you got all the extra installer paths. So these are more or less the same installer paths that you know from Drupal 8, except they're slightly different. So uh, Drupal core still goes into web, exactly as in Drupal 8, but stuff like a, uh, a Drupal module is now going into websites all modules contrib. Uh, Drupal theme also goes into websites all themes contrib. Patches, well, same thing as in Drupal 8, and this was actually converted. So you can see it converted the patch that I had. It doesn't know what the description is, so just type it here. And then you need the preserve paths. So the preserve paths is the part that's uh, important about the Composer project for Drupal 7, because you don't want any of what is in here to be wiped out. So if you are following the Drupal 7 uh, best uh, best practices on how to place files, you will have your contrib modules here. You'll have your custom modules under modules custom. You'll have features under module features, uh, themes and contrib same. And there's there's all this this stuff that's under web. And remember, composer when you do like when you do drush um, require. So there's going to be a Drupal 761 uh, within one week or two. And I either will run composer update or composer require Drupal, uh, Drupal, Drupal 761. Whatever is under web, composer will simply delete. So if you don't have preserved paths, and see, everything here is under web. So uh, that would all be gone. So yeah, so preserved paths is pretty good. The one thing that was in a previous slide is if something happens between the moment that you say Composer require and the moment it finishes building, so for instance, the internet is down and it that didn't fetch one of the packages, what, it will, what this uh, preserved paths uh, Composer uh, add-on does is it moves everything that's here into your Composer cache file. So if you look, in my case, if I look in .composer, um, there is a cache directory there. And under that cache directory is preserve paths. And under preserve paths, there's nothing at the moment because I didn't have something that failed. But if it's for, reason, some, for some reason failed, and you just discovered, oh my god, it destroyed the client site, and I, don't, I didn't do a backup of all the files uh, that they uploaded since last Tuesday. Um, yeah, so one, this is where you can find them. So not, it didn't del delete them, they're still there. Just go grab them, put them back in the original location, and next time do a backup before uh, running Composer. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so once you have the, um, the composer.json.new, 
what I was um, what I was saying about the add-ons that you can do is well, that that doesn't matter. Uh, so this is one the composer JSON that I just generated. Uh, being converted to become fully compatible with the Drupal core project. So I added Semver, I added Composer Autoloader, I added the Symfony file system that's needed for the scripts, I added the Drupal Finder, um, and because I added also the scripts, I mean, I, I, I'm, I would add this composer.json to a base um, Drupal core, uh, Drupal project uh, checkout. Um, the scripts are all there, but I need my composer.json to work with them. So th they are here. Uh, forget about these installer paths, it's just a different, uh, a different syntax. And then you've got the C Wigan's composer patches. So this patch is required. If you don't have this patch, what happens is um, if you have patched Drupal core, and if you changed, um, if you changed, uh, if you changed the version of Drupal core, it will not notify uh, the preserved paths when you when you install a patch. So, what will happen is the you'll be running Composer install. It will try to patch Drupal core. It will, of course, delete everything under web, but without this patch, it will not notify when running, when installing the Drupal core to be patched. It's not going to no notify preserve paths. So remember that thing that your files are safe somewhere? No, without this patch, they are not safe. They are, they are gone. <laughs> and next time, run a backup. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I could show you, well, I think I still have enough time. Um, so I've got here a, uh, a checkout of some deer. Let me just check what, what is in here. Um, less JSON. Yeah, so this is, the raw for the, the raw composite or JSON coming out of a Drupal 7 checkout. And I'm just going to copy the composer.json that I showed you I improved here. So now, now we've got the, the site that I converted. So it's running Drupal 760 and Zen and views. And hopefully if my composer catch cache is old, um, It wouldn't take too long. So, yeah. For some reason it wants, oh, so it's removing composer patches because of the C Wigan's patch. Uh, and it might be that the network is not going to allow me to show this live. Yeah, so okay, actually it does. So now it's installing Drupal tokens, C tools, views, and you can see same thing as you have in Drupal 8. Um, and I just want to show more or less the difference between what you dev from um, from running uh, Drush, DCB18, YAML, and Web. So these are after you run. So that that file, uh, that directory there is running Drush make by itself, and this is, do, and now in web is the results of running Composer. And you can see, well, the only differences are, okay, we've got uh, Composer Autoloader, because, um, yeah, good. Uh, it's one of those things that it's recommended that you start using Composer Autoloader uh, if you, for some of your uh, libraries. Now that you're running Composer, uh, it doesn't have C tools, so that's actually a bug in my original make file. I wouldn't be able to run the site if I tried to enable um, views because I didn't specify C tools. And uh, Drush Make doesn't understand about dependencies, so yay for, um, for Composer, which knows about dependencies and decided 
oh, I need in to install also C tools. Um, you can see that the, the patch itself, so the, the files that were patched are not different, so it's exactly the same patch applied. The only thing that's changed is the way that Drush Make generates the patches.txt file and the way that Composer, that C Wiggins uh, Composer patches generates the patches.txt file is slightly different. So you got the diff here, and well, the other site is actually ready to run because it's got the settings.php and some files. No, actually not. The other site is not ready. This one is ready because the the, the Drupal project set up a settings.php and the files. Um, so that, th those are the only differences. So if you have a, a, a site already done and you do your composer uh, file correctly, you will see no differences at all. You're running the same site. The only difference is instead of being in the root of whatever the GitHub repo that you're doing is as you're now running under web. So you probably need to reconfigure your, uh, your server. But it's exactly the same site. So why are you using Drush Make still? If you, if you are uh, doing Drupal 7 sites, you don't need to be doing that. Um, that's, that's, my, that's my recommendation. Just move over to Composer. You can unify your, um, your current uh, process for Drupal 8 with the current process for Drupal 7. Same things apply. Uh, the make file is slightly different, of course. So if, you're, if you've got some kind of project template, it still needs to be different between 7 and 8. But maybe you can just have like a both composer.json files for the template residing side by side, and you, you make a question when setting up the project, is this a Drupal 7 site, or is this a Drupal 8 site? Um, yeah, so some Git best practices, I think, probably some of these you already know. So one, some of the things, so this is a, a Git uh, workflow that's very old. A lot of uh, other workflows derive from this, but this is basically the, the, the common minimum standard. So you've got a master prod branch that's running your live site. You've got a develop slash stage uh, for running your stage site. And um, you do pull requests to master on each release. So basically, you do a release, uh, and stuff goes into master. So, um, but then you also have like feature branches. So you work on a feature. Um, then you do you do you branch out of, of your development environment your stage whatever you do this you work on it separately and then at one point you consider you do a pull request you consider it stable it goes into a stage and then at one point you say okay it's good so then it gets merged into into the production environment uh, this is not hard to understand. GitHub also somewhat uh, helps you a lot on, on doing branches and uh, pull requests. Um, it's more the how many, how many branches you have. So in Wunder, we used at one point to, to have a third branch, which was called develop, uh, instead of, so you had master and stage and then develop. And we, people developed to develop, and then at one point merged only to stage. You do you do you, as long as you don't do everything to to master, it should be fine. Um, now, what about Git and Composer? So the things that you should do, you should configure Git Ignore. Uh, even the Git Ignore that comes with the Drupal 8 branch of Drupal project, I find it flawed. If you go look into your GitHub uh, repo, you will see that you've got stuff there like index.php is committed to your, to your, um, to your repo. Robots.txt is committed to your repo. Uh, Default.settings.php is somewhere in, uh, in sites is also committed to your repo. And all this did not, doesn't have to be committed to your repo. So whenever you do Composer update or Composer require a new version of Drupal, it will overwrite it. 
you'll, have, you'll see some, some changes, you'll have to commit those changes to your repo, and it's going to be, why, I mean, why is this in the repo? Why is this, why, so you update the Drupal, and now I'm seeing some files in, in the index.php or default settings.php being committed. Why, why, what are these changes? And you, you're just going to say to, the, to where, whoever is reviewing your code, if they're not a Drupal developer, well, Drupal core did these changes. So why am I seeing them in our pull request? Uh, so configure git ignore correctly. Um, again, commit composer.json and composer.lock. Why? Because composer is not a deployment tool. You should have better deployment tools. There's, um, there's, there's so many things like Circle CI. There's uh, DeployBot. There's so many other tools that you can say, OK, run Composer in the deploy tool. It will build all the files. And then once that package is built, it does, I don't know, SFTP or whatever. You don't care to put them in your development environment, uh, in your production environment. And why do I say again, don't use it as a deployment tool? You don't want to be running Composer on your uh, live environment. One thing that if you, run comp if you understand what Composer is doing is there are all these um, this commit, uh, these this scripts that we just, uh, that I just showed here. Uh, Composer, Jason. Yeah. So all these scripts that are here, any of your any package in 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 packages dot, uh, dot org can say, hey, I want to run these scripts. So if you're running Composer on your live environment, I don't know how many packages you have on your site. Let's that, just look at this here. So just a normal Drupal core install installed. Uh, well, Consolidation, the C Wiggins patches, the Fly Dev, the Nogol, Drush, Jakub, Onderka, Nikik, Peer. Do you actually know what all of this shit is doing? Because if they're running a script, they made it some guy like I don't know this Nikik guy. I have no idea who he is. Maybe he's he's doing in in his in his uh, in his uh, scripts for his composer.json. Uh, Maybe it's like, oh, by the way, uh, create a root user and, uh, and send me an email. And you just run composer.update uh, or install in your, in your live server, and that, that guy now owns your server. Well done. So don't, don't run it on, on, composer, on, a, on a live environment, because it clearly is not that's not what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be building your development environments. It's not supposed to be a deployment tool. Um, do you use semantic versions? So understand why the carrots and the tilde are used, what, what they're for, and use it as a development tool. Um, don't use composer update uh, alone or slash naked all the time. Um, Unless, unless you're ready to plan to test everything. So I'll, I'll, I have a slide on that one. And another thing that I find really s weird is some people um, commit vendor and the contrib code to, to Git repo. Why are you doing that? Like a pull request. So you've installed a Drupal module. So like you, at one point you say, OK, now I need the, I don't know, uh, paragraphs media entity something or whatever you install that module the only thing you should be seeing in your pull request is a changed line in composer.json and then a lot of junk that should be related to it in composer.lock those should be the only two changes if you install a module if you commit the drupal.org stuff and the vendor a pull request, instead of being like, I don't know, 100 lines that someone can, can read, could potentially be like three megabytes of lines and lines and lines and lines that you have no idea why is this in the pull request. Um, so and do you actually need that there? Why are you putting it in the repo? 
why, what's the sense? And um, yeah, I'll talk about that later. So again, so what about running composer updates? Uh, and some of you that understand regular expressions know why that is there. Um, it will update everything. So if you run composer update all the time, basically, potentially, you could be updating all the site uh, completely. So not only composer, if you want to do a security release of Drupal core, you decide, OK, I'll run composer update. And you just downloaded like five modules. Do you know what all those modules are now doing? Uh, can you, are you ready to test the entire site? And honestly, I am a module maintainer. I don't have time to do a perfect release all the time. So sometimes, and I just did a, a release for, for a security release for print, where uh, I had to do a release like three days later, because uh, the first release broke a lot. And only, only after people actually tested. So the code that broke had been committed two years ago. It just didn't have enough testers. So after, okay. So after people actually started testing, they said, ah, this is broken. And you're like, OK, good. So new release. So don't, uh, don't, don't run this all the time, but don't fall behind also. Um, do run it from time to time and be prepared. Um, yeah, so again, the same thing I've already said. Honestly, if the only reason I can see for someone to commit vendor and the contrib project is you don't trust the internet. You're, you are afraid that the internet will not be there when you need to build. First of all, true, it's a valid concern. If the internet is not there for like one month, well, the, the zombie apocalypse happened. And nobody cares about your Drupal website anymore. So don't, don't worry about it. The internet will be there, might not be there that hour. And we just had the GitHub down thingy where it was down for uh, well, half a day. But just trust that it's going to be there. It will make your pull requests a lot easier. Sorry to inter interrupt. Uh, yeah. We have one minute left. Yeah, good. So yeah, one f important thing. Um, do rebase stuff from time to time. Do remember to export the config from from, mast, from stage before doing a commit. Because uh, if you use the correct deployment tools, uh, part of it is going to be Drush configuration import. And if you don't export the changes and you don't have config uh, split and or config uh, ignore, then you might overwrite stuff. And so, thank you. Uh, I think we don't have much time for, for um, questions. I'm Jean Ventura working in Wunder, unfortunately not for much longer. So if you need to find me, uh, search for JCN Ventura. Um, and I want to say thank you to everyone in, um, that came here. Thank you for participating. Thank you for my colleagues for being awesome. Thank you, Joao. This is uh, thanks. Thanks for sharing your knowledge again, and see you around. Yeah. If you guys have any questions, I actually I need to run to the airport. But while I'm packing up, if you want to have, if you want to ask anything. Okay, good. Thank you.